Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Reaper blog. In this video, I'm going to show you how I edit podcasts. So I'm one of the hosts of the Home Recording Show at homerecordingshow.com. This week we recorded episode number 242. It's a question and answer episode. I have to do the editing, so I may as well make a video and show you guys how I do it. So let's start out with uh, looking at the template. I have a track for the theme. I have a folder track for all the dialogue tracks. Uh, the intro has some voiceover from my co-host Ryan's wife. So she's on a separate track. I have Ryan's voiceover track, my voiceover track. I have a guest track, and I have a track that is not going through any other subfolders uh, just for music clips and uh, example clips. For processing, the master has a soft clipper just to... Uh, just to prevent any overs. Uh, the theme has some, as a compressor just for ducking for Stella's voice track. Uh, there's a send from Stella's track to this compressor. The dialogue track has some basic EQ, just a low cut, and a basic compressor, some overall glue, basically. Stella's voice has a little... Uh, EQ and some multiband compression. Ryan gets some EQ usually, maybe a bit of compression. He's usually recording through compression already, so I don't need to process him as much. We'll see. Uh, my own track has a gate and this uh, really great compressor that was built by one of the Reaper users called VODP. It's upward and downward compression, just works really well for voiceover. And as well, there will be some EQ. In this project, we don't need the guest track and the example track, so I'll just hit delete. Now let's look at the actual project. I've imported Ryan's audio into this, but we, I have not really lined it up yet. So there's the intro section, and then there's a little transition file, and then the comment section starts, and that's basically the whole show. Looks like Ryan uh, had a dropout here and then had to add in another file. And then at the end we have our another theme transition. Ryan will say thank you and then our outro theme and Stella's voiceover. So that's the basic setup for the podcast. Okay, so let's get into the editing. I can see here that Ryan's voice starts right here. And I need to trim that. So there's a bunch of different ways. You could grab this edge and then drag it over. I'll undo. I can hit split. I can go back and I can hit delete. I could uh, split it and then hit uh, cut to remove that. I'm going to heal that split. Um, and I use a an action. Let's bring up the action list. Find the shortcut. I use the letter A to trim left, and it's a custom action. I'll just show you. Trim items left of cursor, and move cursor to the start of the item, and then go to the cursor. It's uh, it's it's kind of weird. It's almost exactly like the normal operation, but it this just works a little bit better because it keeps the view where you left it. So that's my trim left. So hit go here, I press A, and that will um, will move that over. But we want to be working in shuffle mode, so uh, for all tracks. So I hit there, and then let's find where I speak. Okay. Hey, guys. All right, so that one goes there. So I hit A. Zine.com. Hey, guys. And I am Ryan. All right, so I want to get rid of that. So I'll hit S there before the thing I want to remove, and then click here to where I want to resume editing, and then hit A. So now we've got this. Zine.com. Hey, guys. And I am Ryan Canestro at... Okay. Com. You can find us on Twitter. All right, I can get rid of all that. You can find us on Twitter, John at The Audio Geek, and me at Ryan Canestro. Emails are... 
And I like to get rid of these little breaths. Emails are john or ryan at homerecordingshow.com. If you're shopping, shopping. And any mistakes, of course, get rid of them. If you're shopping on Amazon, please click through our link. They'll break off a piece of jar for one. All right. Please click through our link. They'll break off a piece. And right there, I, I just use the mute function. So I just click the item and then hit M. To, uh, well, for me, my shortcut for muting is the letter M. And by, by default, um, M brings up the mixer. So I changed the default for me. Toggle items slash track mute depending on focus. So if I highlight this and hit M, it mutes the track. And if I hit this and hit M, it will mute or unmute the item. For me, that's really, really fast. So where were we? Send it our way. Click on the tip. I don't like that. Now this audio is probably important for later. Let's solo it. What the hell did I say? <laughs> Ask HRS number four. All right. So that, yeah, that's later where Ryan forgot what we were doing. And sometimes you have to jump in and out of uh, shuffle mode to do this. There's no audio here, so I'm just going to mute that. So there's no noise in the background or anything. Send it our way. Click on the right of that. Bring monthly donations. Archives. Archives tabs near the top of our page. Check out every show we've done. Find us. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash home recording show. If you listen, if you listen on iTunes, please write us a review. And we don't have a comment section. Let's get into the show, which is the comment section. So let's get into. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, so let's hear what we've got. Peace and send it our way. Click on the tip jar for one time or reoccurring monthly donations. Archives tabs near the top of our page. Check out every show we've done. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash home recording show. If you listen on iTunes, please write us a review. Let's get into the show, which is the comments section. <laughs> Ask HRS number four. Hell yeah. So just trim that up. Mute. Oops, split, mute. Okay, and then we've got a transition. Hell yeah. All right, and then we were just talking, and then the actual show starts here. Michael from Austria. So, trim that. Gone, and I took a damp towel out of the. I don't know what I was talking about. I think I was talking about how it's hot. Podcasting in the summer, it's always hot. We didn't use it in quite some time. Okay, so content starts here. I think. Michael from Austria writes in, Hello, Michael. Hello, my lovely HRS guys. My name is Michael. I am from Austria, the one without kangaroos. All right. So I'm doing a um, alt drag to shift my audio over here. Kangaroos. <laughs> and I consider myself a longtime listener of your show by now. Actually, your show is the only thing I listen to in my car, except for the occasional mixes I do here and there. I was, ho I was hoping that in your $15 coffee hype, I don't know what that means. I'll keep reading. You could possibly find. I don't know what that means. Could possibly find the time. You could possibly find the time to help me with a problem I have with one of my guitar amps. It's a Fender Frontman R212 combo. Don't judge. It's a cheap solid state amp, but it was my first amp, and it was totally fine for that purpose. But I, but I didn't. 
but I didn't use it in quite some time as I'm not playing a whole lot of guitar in the last months. Also, have a few other shitty amps I've gathered in my home studio. Oh, I mean bedroom. The problem with the amp is pretty usual. All right, so this, some of this content's kind of irrelevant, so I'll listen to it again and then figure out where I can cut. Don't judge. It's a cheap, solid-state amp, but it was my first amp, and it was totally fine for that purpose. All right, so... Oh, I mean bedroom. I don't find any useful information. At least I think so. The problem with the amp... I'll just start there. The problem with the amp is pretty usual. At least I think so. I don't find any... I don't find any useful information on the interwebs, and I'm not DIY enough to come up with a solution myself. Also, I'm not very good with electronics. Oh, and originally I'm a drummer, so I'm not even a real musician. <laughs> I also disassembled the amp, but couldn't find anything obviously broken in it. The problem with the amp... Uh, the problem with the amp expresses... The problem with the... Problem the amp expresses... problem with the amp all right so i know ryan kind of got confused here in the reading the problem the amp expresses itself like this I f problem with the amp the amp expresses itself like this expresses itself the problem with the amp expresses itself like this and that's about it. amp expresses the amp expresses the problem with the amp expresses itself like this the problem with the amp expresses itself like this the problem with the amp the problem with the amp expresses itself like this. I first noticed that every time I turn it on, so every time it gets powered, it would make a loud tone for half a second or second-ish. I first noticed that every time I turn it on, so every time it gets I first noticed that every every time it gets noticed that every time it gets powered, it would make a loud tone for half a second or second-ish. It's just uh it's not really just it's not really just noise or a hum. It's almost like a tone you get from a tone generator. Even somewhat like a sine wave. I'm actually really bad at describing the problem, but I hope you get the idea. Either way, it's not really buzzy or hummy or anything. It's just a weird tone. A week ago I noticed that this tone is per Alright, so right there there was a noise on my track. I have a custom action set up that will take whatever I highlight. Uh, whatever my selection is, and then uh, split it on each end and mute it. So I'll show you that action. I have it set up for the uh, forward slash, or also Command M. So uh, custom action mute selected area, which is split items at time selection, item properties mute, and then custom action remove all selections. So we need to find that remove all selections. So, custom. Which is remove time selection and loop point selection, unselect all items, unselect all points, and unselect all tracks. So I, this uh, custom action might come with the, um, it might come with the SWS extensions, I'm not sure, but uh, if not, um, you can pause and rewind this video and go back and create your own custom actions based on what I just showed you. Um, I recommend that you do because it's very useful for editing dialogue. Now, without that remove all selections function in there, it would just mute and I would still be, I would still have this area selected instead of going back to the start. I hope you get the idea. Either way, right, so it's not really too. buzzy or hummy or anything. It's just a weird tone. A week ago, I noticed that this tone is per A week ago, I noticed that this tone is permanent, and there's no guitar cable plugged into one of the two inputs on the amp. If I plug in a cable in either of the inputs, the tone goes away. The tone appears during powering on of the amp, regardless of if there's a cable plugged in or not. If there's no cable plugged 
All right, so here I'm moving around a bit. And instead of muting it, I'll show you another action. Um, I have an action so that whatever my time selection is, I can raise or lower the volume in two decibel increments. So I make a time selection and I press the comma key and that will go minus two. So in this case, I might hit it three times to get minus six. And that shouldn't be triggering the gate or anything like that. I also have one that goes up. Okay. And I'll show you that action. These two actions are uh, custom actions and they're something that I use all the time um, for dialogue editing and for music. Um, I use it instead of compression sometimes. So uh, let me just find that. Find shortcut, comma key. So split and trim gain down. And I'll show you that. Split items at time selection, uh, the Xena Kios SWS nudge item volume down. And I do that one twice. It's one dB uh, for each of those actions. And then split and gain up. So nudge item volume up. Same thing. Make those two actions. You will love them. Plugged in or not. If there's no cable plugged in, it just doesn't go away. I hope that description wasn't too long or too confused out for you. I hope that um, and it, it does sound like some kind of capacitor issue. Um, maybe I like to remove the ums because I say them a lot and they're very annoying. So once again, this really quick uh, editing, sort of shuffle editing. Make sure your ripple editing is on for all tracks. Um, click before the thing you want to remove, hit S. Click after the item you want to remove, hit A, and then hit spacebar Maybe again to keep playing. Maybe capacitor is kind of on the way out. All right, so at this point, it's pretty much the same. Um, I, just until the show's done. So I have that much more to do. And uh, rather than make this YouTube video like three hours long, let's just cut it there. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've learned something. hope you can put these custom actions into your own dialogue, uh, voiceover, and, uh, and actually music projects. So thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, leave a comment if you have any questions about this stuff. All right, thanks, guys.